Hey there folks and welcome back. Today we're going to look at an example that uses the divergence theorem in a pretty cool way. We're looking to evaluate the surface integral of the vector field f of x, y, z equals x, z, x squared 2, but we're integrating over a pretty unusual surface. S is the boundary of the solid enclosed by the hemisphere, z equals the square root of 1 minus x squared minus y squared, below the cone, z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, and above the plane, z equals 0. However, S does not include the plane z equals 0 itself. Okay, now there's a lot of information about S in this question, so let's go through this carefully and see what we can say. We're given a hemisphere, z equals root 1 minus x squared minus y squared. If we square both sides of this and rearrange, we can write it as x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. So this is part of the unit sphere, but since z is a square root, it's non-negative, right? This is just the top half of the sphere. We also have this cone, z equals root x squared plus y squared. Ah, we've worked with this cone several times before. This is an upward opening cone that makes an angle of pi over 4 with the xy plane. We're also given the plane z equals 0, and apparently these three surfaces together enclose some solid in R3. S is the boundary of this solid, but we're ignoring the plane z equals 0, so we might be omitting one of its faces. On the next slide, we're going to sketch this surface, we're going to give it upward orientation, and then we're going to try to find this surface integral of f. Okay, so I've started by graphing the surfaces given to us in the problem. I want to identify that solid region that they enclose, and therefore identify the surface S. So you can see that we have the upper half of the unit sphere, and the cone z equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Our solid lies below the cone, but inside the hemisphere, above the plane z equals zero. So I can actually strip away a lot of this picture. I'll get rid of the upper part of the cone, the upper part of the sphere, and you can see that this is going to be our solid region. Maybe we'll call that solid region E. Okay, now what about our surface S? S is the boundary of this solid, excluding the plane z equals zero. So really, it's got this spherical wall around the outside, this conical wall along the inside, but it's open at the bottom. We need to compute the surface integral of this vector field over that surface S. Hmm, now I guess we could go by definition. We could try to parametrize the sphere, parametrize the cone, but that sounds like a lot of work. Instead, maybe we can use one of our big results. Could we use Stokes' theorem? After all, this surface isn't closed, right? It's open at the bottom. So maybe we could use Stokes' theorem and instead compute the line integral along this boundary. Well, it's not a bad idea, but there is a bit of a problem here. Remember, Stokes' theorem says that the surface integral of the curl of a vector field is equal to the line integral of that vector field along the boundary of the surface. So if we wanted to convert this surface integral into a line integral, we would have to think of this vector field f as the curl of some other vector field. But can you think of a vector field g that has this guy as its curl? I don't think that's so obvious. And in fact, as we'll see shortly, it's impossible. There is no vector field g whose curl is given by this expression here. So Stokes' theorem is off the table. We can't replace this surface integral with a line integral. We're going to have to think of something else. Could we maybe use the divergence theorem? Well, not directly. This surface is open at the bottom, and the divergence theorem requires our surface to be closed. Ah, if only that bottom face were included in our surface, then we could use the divergence theorem. Well, here's a sneaky idea, folks. Let's put that bottom face back in. Then we'll apply the divergence theorem to compute the surface integral over the entire closed surface. But of course, we shouldn't have counted the surface integral of the bottom face. So we'll subtract that surface integral from our result. Okay, so we have a clever game plan here. We're going to define S1 to be this bottom face that we're now going to lump in with S. The surface made up of all three graphs, why don't we call S2? So S2 is really S together with S1, and in order to apply the divergence theorem, we want everything to be oriented outward, right? S is already oriented upward or outward, but S1 is now going to have to be oriented this way. We're going to have to orient S1 downward. Okay, let's now compute the surface integral over the entire surface S2. 
Since we're dealing with a closed, outward-oriented surface, we can use the divergence theorem. By the divergence theorem, the surface integral over S2 of f dot ds is really the triple integral over the solid E of the divergence of f dv. We can compute the divergence by differentiating our component functions. The divergence is partial by partial x of xz plus partial by partial y of x squared plus partial by partial z of 2. And our last two terms are going to disappear, right? We're simply left with z. So we have to compute the triple integral over e of z dv. As a quick comment before moving on, you showed on one of your assignments that the divergence of the curl of a vector field must be zero. But our divergence isn't zero, it's z. Therefore, f can't be written as the curl of some other vector field g. And hence, Stokes' theorem really does not apply here. Okay, we have to compute the triple integral of z throughout this solid region e. It looks like this region will be most easily expressed in terms of spherical coordinates, right? Our theta value would go all the way around from 0 to 2 pi. Our phi value is going to go from, well, this angle here, which I think we said was pi over 4, all the way to this angle here, which will be pi over 2. And our rho value will extend from 0 all the way out until the boundary of the sphere, which is of radius 1. Finally, we'll express z as rho cos phi, and we'll change our volume factor to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. It looks complicated, but it's actually not that hard. Notice that everything splits up really nicely. We have the theta part, the integral from 0 to 2 pi d theta. We have the phi part, the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2 of sine phi cos phi d phi. And we have the rho part, the integral from 0 to 1 of rho cubed d rho. The first integral and the last integral are very straightforward. The middle integral can be solved using a substitution. I'll let you verify that you get a final answer of pi over 8. Okay, now that's the surface integral over the entire surface S2, but we really don't want to include this bottom face S1. The surface integral over S, the thing that we're actually looking for, is the surface integral over S2 of f dot ds minus the surface integral over S1 of f dot ds. We have to remove this extra part. So that's going to be pi over 8 minus the surface integral over S1 of f dot ds. We'll wrap up this problem on the next slide by computing this integral. Okay, if we're going to compute the surface integral of f over S1, we're going to need a parametrization for S1. S1 is given by a part of the plane z equals 0, right? It's the graph of a function. So we can parametrize it by r of x, y equals x, y, 0, where it looks like x and y are coming from the inside of the unit circle. x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. Okay, we have a parametrization for our surface, but we still need that normal vector, rx cross ry. Now you know the drill, right? Since we're dealing with the graph of a function, we can compute this as minus partial f by partial x, minus partial f by partial y, and 1. Well, the partial derivatives of 0 with respect to x and y are both 0, so we just get the vector 0, 0, 1. Let's double check. Is this oriented correctly? 0, 0, 1 points up but we're looking for a normal vector that points down, right? We want this entire surface to have outward orientation, so S needs downward orientation. We're going the wrong way. So we really want the vector minus Rx cross Ry. We want 0, 0, minus 1. All right, we're ready to wrap up this computation. The surface integral of F over S1 is, according to our formula, the double integral over the space where our parameters live, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, of f dot rx cross ry, and of course we're using the negative here, dA. Well, if we take the dot product of this vector field with the vector 0, 0, minus 1, we're going to get a value of minus 2. So this integral is really minus 2 times the double integral over x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1, dA. Ah, we're integrating the constant function 1 throughout this unit circle. So that's the area of the unit circle. It's pi. We get a surface integral of minus 2 pi. 
And therefore, the surface integral over s is pi over 8 minus minus 2 pi. That gives us a final answer of 17 pi over 8.